Tonight on Not So Random, prepare to be captivated by the extraordinary journey of Bob Barber. At that time, I was, I was beginning to post stuff on YouTube, gradually, but then I started building momentum and more momentum. And essentially, I was, the Lord took me into dreams and visions. The enigmatic force behind End Time Dream and Vision on YouTube and founder of the Feed My Sheep Today ministry. Feed My Sheep Today, essentially, the origins of it started with me offering to give people free Bibles anywhere on the planet. Bob's relentless passion for souls burns like a wildfire. And we received that gift from him by having faith in what he did to achieve that gift that he's given to us. Igniting hearts both online and in the trenches. From his digital pulpit reaching countless souls through technology, to his unwavering support of missionaries who tirelessly serve as boots on the ground, if you are a qualified Christian missionary, we can bring you on and we can begin financially supporting your work. I mean, that is like the dream connection. Bob's impact is undeniable. What is God calling you to do? Maybe you will gain clarity by hearing the following story. In our ever-connected world, spreading the timeless message of Jesus Christ has taken on a thrilling new dimension. The gospel itself remains unchanged, but the methods for delivery have skyrocketed into this digital age, breathing fresh life into the age-old command to go ye into all the world. Tonight, I have the distinct privilege of speaking with one of the visionaries who has harnessed the power of the internet to reach countless souls while recognizing the irreplaceable value of face-to-face -face ministry. Bob Barber, a passionate end times expert and a dynamic force behind the YouTube channel End Time Dream and Vision, joins us tonight, a regular guest seen on Un Uptime Community Church with Greg Messina, and he's definitely a sought after voice on numerous YouTube channels and other media platforms. Bob's insights into the rapture and the coming tribulation have captivated audiences worldwide. This fervent interest in end times prophecy has ignited a powerful movement fueling Bob's unwavering mission to help those in need across the globe. Welcome to Not So Random, Bob. Uh, couldn't give you enough accolades for what you've done for the ministry. That was an incredible introduction. Thank you so much for that, Gary. That's probably like the best yeah. introduction of myself I've ever heard. You're talking about me. It's like, that's that me? He's talking. It can't possibly be me. He's talking about. That's probably that's Holy Spirit, Bob. He's talking about because you know the Holy Spirit, you know, indwells with all of us, and it's just like um, like we have brothers, sisters, those of us who have siblings, and we we all share the same father and mother, but you know each one of us are different, but we do share the family resemblance, so the same family resemblance. And the Holy Spirit's the same family resemblance in all of us. And essentially, I'm Holy Spirit Bob because it was, it was my dead spirit that the Holy Spirit brought back to life. Okay. Amen. And then it mixed with my spirit and my spirit brought back to life to be like Christ. But it has a spin of Bob Barber. Just like the Holy Spirit brought you back to life, Gary, the moment you believe. But it has a spin of Gary Gates. Okay. So we, we we share the same Father's Spirit, okay, which why we connect so well. And, you know, what, when we talk about the Lord, it's, it's easy. We flow good, you know. But it like, but we're different because, like I said, I'm Bob Barber and you're Gary Gates. So it's nice. We're, it's going to be billions of us in heaven that share that same dynamic, you know. We all share the common thread of the Holy Spirit. But we also get to enjoy the, the differences and every single one of us, billions of us all throughout history. And I think that's a beautiful thing. So it definitely is. Amen. Your uh, your journey has been uh, has has been more than just something ordinary. God's really had his hand on you even from the beginning. Uh, tell our viewers about how you got your start in in ministry for the Lord. Well, I, I came from 28 years of Catholicism. I went to a Catholic school. All right. So I was basically in Christianity 101. I guess you want to call it that, you know, and I can get into all that. But be it as it may, I came from 28 
years of Catholicism. I asked the Lord, uh, what do you want me to do? Because I was introduced to a non-denominational church and they were teaching all stuff about the rapture and salvation, all this stuff that was pretty much foreign to me. And so I asked the Lord, where do you want me to go? Because I was going to a Catholic church one week and I'll go to non-denominational church the next week and I'll flip back and forth. Okay. Well, the day I asked that question, the Lord said, let me show you where I want you to go. And while I was at the Catholic church, just when I asked that question, the priest started falling asleep at the podium. And the priest it was pretty much like this. I mean, literally, Gary, it's like this. He's talking, and all of a sudden, it's like this, and like this, and like this. His face started going into the mic. And all of a sudden, it's like... <laughs> he started snoring into the mic. I couldn't believe it. The guy literally fell asleep, Gary. And my wife and I looked at each other. I was like, it's time for us to go. You know, so <laughs> I got up, walked out of Catholic Church for the very last time. And, you know, I did a lot there. I was at Knights of Columbus, did all that weird stuff, you know. But I asked the Lord, I want you to use me and I want you to work me so hard that I'm absolutely exhausted. Okay, I want to be worked so hard so that I'm absolutely exhausted. And he said, well, be careful what you wish for, because six months later, I was introduced at that time to this non-denominational church. And then they had this whole production of drama production. And I started participating in all that. And literally, I was like a stage guy. I was a, I was a props building guy. I built stuff. I maintained as, as all the mechanics. Like, so I was good at that stuff. I was also did acting. And so I literally got worked to death there, <laughs> you know. And I got to the point where I was absolutely exhausted. And I was happy about it. But then the Lord said, Bob, it's time for you to move on. And I was like, but I enjoy everything I'm doing here. He said, no, I want you to start doing YouTube. I want you to get on YouTube. I want you to start preaching on YouTube. Take everything you learn from here and begin preaching on YouTube because there's a lot of things coming down the pike over the next several years. And what was, what was happening to me, Gary, as I was getting so welled up with all this stuff about prophecy and stuff going on around the world. And it's like back in 2011, 2012, you know, the mind calendar, all that crazy stuff. So I'm watching all this stuff, reading the book of Revelation, going through the Bible, seeing all this stuff already. So I had, it had, it started coming out of me. So I started telling people around me and then I started posting stuff on Facebook because the only way I knew how to share stuff and people were just shouting me down there, <clears throat> just shouting me down, <laughs> making fun of me. You know, some people liked it, but most people just made fun of me. Okay. I was even at my job, mechanic at a steel mill, I had a radio on me. And I hear everybody cracking jokes about me on the radio that everybody, the whole plant can hear, you know, about me and what I was doing for the Lord and my channel and stuff like that. They're all cracking jokes about me. So, be it as it may, though, after um, everything started, well, essentially everything started falling apart at that church. That all, I started losing favor like crazy. It all fell apart. So that sh the Lord was showing me, hey, it's time to go. <laughs> and at that time, I was, I was beginning to post stuff on YouTube gradually but then i started building momentum and more momentum and the lord took me into dreams and visions first i was sharing my own dreams but i was running out of content real quick so how many of us had that many dreams really you know so the lord said i want you to begin reading the dreams and visions of all your subscribers start telling everybody to send them your dreams you read them and i'll give you the interpretation to the dream through the holy spirit so basically all joseph style you know so I thought, wow, nobody's going to watch that. So <laughs> I was like, sure, Lord, I'll go ahead and do that. And I started doing it. And lo and behold, started growing pretty good, started growing quick. And then the Lord said, hey, how about we start doing some animations and recreate these dreams? Okay. I thought that was like way out there. But I started doing it. Basically, I didn't go to school to learn how to do all the animating and stuff like that and all the computer tricks and everything. I learned that school of hard knocks, okay? That's how I learned it. Every single day, struggling like crazy to build this thing and how to make videos. Every day I came into work, complaining to this believer friend of mine how angry I was because I was trying to get over one of these settings on my editing program. But be it as it may, I began making animations. I began showing a lot of videos. 
dealing with dreams and visions and more and more dreams started coming in. And I said to myself, Lord, I'm going to reach the end of these dreams and visions. I'm going to catch up and I'm going to take a break. The Lord told me you will never catch up. You will never catch up. And lo and behold, I never caught up. Subscribers kept on increasing. The more dreams and visions start coming in, more of them start coming in. And I just stuck with it. And occasionally I would make, you know, other videos. And I got into making rapture resurrection reports and a bunch of other videos where the Lord will lead me to make other videos outside of dreams and visions. But mainly I stuck with the dreams and visions. And I think it worked out pretty good because now I created a database of 12 years of this stuff. And now I can see all the similarities and what everybody's been seeing over the last 12 years where I can begin painting this prophetic picture of what's happening and what's going to happen when the rapture resurrection takes place and what can happen after the rapture resurrection takes place and so on and so forth. Okay. The foolish things that confound the wise, isn't it brother? Right. Absolutely. Because uh, uh, one thing that popped up when you were saying that was that old saying that I heard that, uh, uh, God equips the called, not calls the equipped. Hmm. And it doesn't make any sense because it's like, you know, Lord, why do you want to stretch me in a place that's totally uncomfortable? You know, I was talking to you beforehand and I said, you know, I'm used to being on the other side of a camera, making sure that my pastor's bringing forth and, you know, he, he could worry about how he brings forth the word and I can just worry about how it's projected out to the world. And, you know, his back's to the end of the cross, my back's to the cross, his back's to the cross, and we're holding up the cross, you know. And we both have a little bit different uh, viewpoint, but we all carry the same vision. And uh, we all have a, a part to play. And, um, but anyway, you know, I've been on a journey myself where at different times of my life, I feel, I, it's not like you ever feel like you've arrived by any means, but you're like, well, Lord, we're, we're doing everything we can do for this particular church media wise. Uh, mm -hmm. there's probably nothing else. And then all of a sudden God starts stretching you and has you doing things that's out of your comfort zone. And then you look back now and you're like, Wow. I know that was God because I wouldn't have come out of my shell to do that, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's just neat to see how God's little witty ideas, uh, when they're totally directed by him, he'll he'll uh, he'll give a way to get to it. It's just like, uh, uh, what was it, the, the ram in the bush on top of the mountain, you know, supposed to sacrifice the son. But no, God, God already knew he was just wanting to have the obedience. He didn't want that son to die and uh of abraham and he had a a sacrifice there you know god will prepare you and uh, for the place you're in and it's amazing to look back and people probably thinking you know bob barber he came out of mama with the bible in his hand turned to revelation you know and we think that that's how you came out and you know there there's so many that i've talked to recently that are like uh, what we consider, you know, man, this guy has his finger on the rapture. He, he, he knows the end times. And then you realize that it may just have been a short amount of time before that they weren't totally had their mind wrapped around it, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that's an encouragement to someone watching because they could see somebody that has a following like you have on YouTube and everything. And they think, well, I, I, I can't be like him. Well, God didn't call you to be like him. You know, God didn't call you to be me and God didn't call you to be Bob, but he called you to be you, you know, and I just think it's, uh, that's awesome. Uh, my, my, my story is a little bit like yours in a way, because I mean, I was in a job where I was doing online news and stuff for a, a online newspaper and dealing with websites and creating it and dealing with all those analytics and crunching numbers every week to see where our advertising uh, prices need to be changed to uh, for the increase or the decrease of how, how many views our, our website would get. And I felt like I was just uh, in a situation where, you know, the old saying, you know, if it bleeds, it leads, you know, it's like everything I do is based on whatever tragedy of the month 
you know, occurs. Mm -hmm. And that's just no place to, you know, that's, that's not a good place to be in. You know, I'd rather be involved in ministry where at the end of the day, it's about the one sheep and it's not about how many millions have come to read about the tragedy, but they come to read the story of hope and it's a different deal. And, you know, God called you out of a steel mill and God called me out of a news place. And I tell you, I'm just, I just praise God every day that it, I hope that in some way that at the end of the day that somebody got reached today and yeah. it isn't about the numbers and the subscriber count and all that. It's easy, you know, to look at those things because, you know, we're, you know, the type we're, we're people that, you know, not that we're trying to be man pleasers by any means, because Lord knows you can't please them all. Right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> with all the bad and the, the good and the bad comments that come in, you know, for a fact, you can't please them all. Mm -hmm. So you just have to deal with that audience of one. And, and did I please Jesus today? You know, Amen. but, uh, but anyway, the, the thing that I was wanting to share next was, you know, you already were talking about your, uh, uh, you know, dilemmas in ministry and stuff and everything. Um, do you feel right now where you're at that there's a greater need today than ever before to advance the gospel in these last days? Is that what motivates you today? Absolutely. It's 100% of what's motivating me. All right. Because we know that this age of grace is coming to an end. And I love being able to understand all that stuff. You know, coming from a Catholic church, you don't know any, hardly anything. <laughs> you know all the wrong stuff, man. Even when I went to that non-denominational church, I began learning about the rapture. They at least taught a pre-tribulation rapture, but they didn't teach salvation correctly, and they, they did not rightly divide. Okay, so I, I gleaned from that. And then I came to YouTube, and then I began learning just on my own after that. And then I learned how to rightly divide. Uh, that happened because uh, I began communicating, talking a lot I'm on the phone with Scotty Clark. Uh, he's the one that found the Revelation 12 sign. And I started communicating with him, did some shows with him. He showed me everything about rightly dividing. And when that happened, then, you know, it just the whole world came to life. The whole Bible came to life because I, I'm just like you, Gary, and just like Shane at black swan you go through the whole bible and it's like this whole bible is just like this part of the bible says i'm damned this part of the bible says here if i look at the woman the wrong way i'm i'm, I'm a sinner i'm messing up this part of the bible says i have grace and received by grace through faith alone this part of the bible says here i got i cannot take the mark of the beast so it's like you have all this stuff here i was like okay how am i saved here i guess i could kind of just put it all into a blender and just you know, believe in have this relationship with Jesus. Just have a relationship with Jesus. Have a relationship with Jesus, you know. And a lot of people don't even get to that point to answer your question. Okay, the need is so great right now because there's so much deception out there. There's so much confusion about salvation now. Okay, even in those who've heard the gospel. I'm not counting all the people that we're reaching through Feed My Sheep today, people who are worshiping trees and stuff like that. And these weird gods, mountain gods and stuff like that in these villages and places in third world countries, you know, I'm talking about just regular believers or people that think they're saved. OK, so rightly dividing helped me to realize, hold on a second, all this information that I learned through the Bible, when I took it, I dropped it into it. It was like this compartment. This, all these compartments were put in front of me and I dropped everything about I knew about the Bible into it and everything just separated into a spot and now it's compartmentalized where I can easily understand each thing and it makes perfectly 100% perfect sense to me now the age of grace we're in the age of grace and right now we are saved by grace to faith not of works gift of God lest any man should boast okay Ephesians 2 8 9 all right people don't know that verse all right i never heard anybody say that verse once as a catholic okay once i never heard that verse once i never heard first corinthians 15 1 through 4 i never heard that talked about it's all i heard were the four gospels that's it i mean they hardly ever went into paul's epistles or anything like that okay so right now 
there are all these folks out there that think they know the Lord, but they don't. Okay, they think they know the gospel, but they don't. They think they have salvation, but they don't. Okay, so right now, to answer your question, there is a there is a bigger need now than ever before to reach as many people as we can because one, we have record amounts of people walking this earth at record pace now, being born. All right, and two, the tribulation is about to begin. <laughs> so the best time to get saved is right now during the age of grace because we are saved by grace through faith alone we have faith in what jesus did okay jesus brings us the gift of salvation all right and we receive that gift from him by having faith in what he did to achieve that gift that he's given to us okay that's the exchange all right but after the age of grace it's going to be you, you must have faith and demonstrate that faith by not taking the mark of the beast. Okay. Just like Noah. Noah had faith, but he had to demonstrate that faith by building an ark. Okay. Um, Abraham, he had faith, but he had to demonstrate that faith by leaving his hometown and going out to the wilderness and then going back to Egypt to free God's people. He had to demonstrate that faith. And the Israelites, they demonstrated their faith by sacrificing these lambs that were essentially the atonement for their sin. Okay. So the, that, those are your demonstration of faith. But right now we strictly have faith in Jesus finished works alone, faith alone. We don't have to go out and do anything to demonstrate that faith. Okay. You don't have to go stand on a, a box in the corner and tell the whole world that Jesus is Lord. Okay. You don't have to do that. We recommend that you do. All right, and it's so easy to 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 believe in just faith alone. I share that with my family members. You know, when they they still believe that you have to be good, you got to do these works, you got to do these sacraments, you got to do all this Catholic stuff, you got to go to confession, you know, all this stuff, and all of them are scared the crap because they don't know if they have salvation. I say, hey, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. You know, the Bible says Ephesians two eight and nine that we're saved by grace through faith. It's a gift of God, not of works. All right. You have faith in what Jesus did, and then he gives that gift to you as a form of a spiritual rebirth. It's a gift. Heaven is a gift, a gift, but you must have faith in what Jesus did to receive that gift. And that's all God requires is to believe in what Jesus did at that cross to save them to atone for their sins. That's the gift, the Lamb of God, that God gave the world to take away the sins of the world. If you believe in all that, when it's presented to you, then God gives you eternal salvation. And he does that by rebirthing your spirit, as laid out in Ephesians 4.30, that you are sealed and saved unto or for the purpose of the day of redemption, rapture, resurrection. So a lot of people... Don't know that gospel, how simple it is. All right. And it is so important now to it's so important now to get this information out to everybody as quickly as possible. That's what I love about your channel here, is because there's a lot of people here, even here on YouTube, that they're listening to all these false teachers talk about you better keep that Saturday Sabbath. Okay, or you better do this, you better do that. Oh, believe in Jesus, but do this, 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 and that. Do your part so that way you will be saved. Hey family, if you're enjoying this interview, you can go watch the full interview at Gary and Angina's Gates channel, Not So Random Acts of Kindness. The link is below or just click the card above. And when you get there, make sure to subscribe because they are doing interviews now with a lot of key people that you follow here on YouTube, like all of the Uptime panelists, Brother Chris from Global Rapture Watchers, and many more and many of your favorites to come. So subscribe to their channel now so you don't miss them and you won't miss out on what the Lord is revealing about the end times and the rapture resurrection here at their channel, Not So Random Acts of Kindness. So hit that link below or the card above, go to their channel right now and subscribe and position yourself and your family to be blessed.